Continuing with the traffic cone, um, this is where we left off last time. I'm just going to zoom out using the command minus there. And you can see the effect that we've got here with the with the top looking kind of hollow and the bottom having this nice round. You just kind of need to remember to keep these curves flattened out. People often tend to make them too rounded. If you make them too rounded, they just don't look as good. Okay, so keep them keep them really flat looking. Same way up here, you can make those those ellipses too uh, too flat looking. You want them to look really thin. Look how thin they are. Really wide this way, really narrow across this way. Okay. Okay. Now for the bottom, and this is to me the kind of like the most difficult part of it. Um, doing the bottom part of the cone. Once you know how, though, it's really not that hard. Uh, this is the best method I've figured out. Rounded rectangle. Draw a square with it. Now, as you remember, if you hold a shift, it'll be a perfect square. I'm using the right side of my um, keyboard here so that I can reach my up and down arrow keys. Remember how you can make it more rounded with the up arrow and less rounded? You want it kind of a, a, a pretty uh, uh, wide curve there and the shift key will provide the the uh, box and the up and down arrows using the round rectangle will give you those curves so make sure it's not too square I mean that to me is too square and this to me is too round so somewhere right there, just kind of a sweet spot, feels feels about right, light up with your mouse first. Okay, then with the selection tool, the black arrow, you want to turn it so it's 45 degrees. Okay, and I'll zoom in so you can see this. Okay, take your free transform tool. And remember, with free transform, the object has to be selected. There's a lot of tools like that. The reshape tool is that way, the width tool is that way. you got to have something selected for them to work on. Free transform is the same way. Click and drag, and then press the command key, and you will see the shape start to flatten out. The smart guy is kind of helping me here. I'm keeping that little green spot, that green line snapped. Okay, then grab the front, start making it smaller, then press the command key. It really is, I think it works best when you do it in that sequence. And you want to flatten this out again, pretty flat. If you look at it, I'm creating this shape, this shape right there. And it's pretty flat. If you look at it, it's a pretty flat shape. Okay, so I'm going to maybe back up just one move here and I've almost got it too flat. Then I'm going to press the command key and I'm going to stop right about there. Okay, now take a look at that shape. Let me just deselect and you can see the shape that I've got. Start with a round corner rectangle. Use the free transform tool to get it to this point. Now make a copy of it. Here's what I do. I hold the shift key and the option key. That way it stays in perfect alignment. It's not critical that it be kept in perfect alignment. I'm just in the habit of using that shift key so it makes it a lot easier just to, I can even use the down arrow keys and it'll just go straight back on top of this box. Okay, so there's my top now. This is actually going to become my side and I and I'm talking about I'm talking about this part. Okay. Okay, here's how I work it. Select it. Pen tool. With the pen tool, with the pen tool, I want to roll up to this path. When I first see that little green line, that means that it and the pen plus, notice that it looks like a pen plus. When you see pen plus, remember that's going to add an anchor point. So I add an anchor point on the furthest out part of this round. Okay, I want to do the same thing over here. Coming in, coming in, coming in, right there. Pen plus. Okay, cool. All right, now, <clears throat> direct selection tool, type an A. I want to get rid of these two anchor points. Notice that they're the only ones that are highlighted, so they're the only ones that will delete when I press the delete key. Now I'm going to select these two anchor points. 
Notice that they are now the only things uh, fully selected. These are still white. That means they will delete when I when I select them. Now I could have done that in one move. Okay. Now you see what I've got there is that front line. It helps to look at it in outline view. You can really tell what you're about to do here. So I'll just select that. I want to click and drag straight down shift option. We do a lot with that shift option, don't we? And I'm just going to make a copy right there. I'm just totally eyeballing it, what looks like it might be enough. If it doesn't look like it's enough, you can add a couple of clicks with your arrow key. Now, I want to select these two points. Notice that's the end of this one and the end of this one. And we want to join it. There's actually a shortcut for this, Command-J. And it's, see, it just added that little bit. Now, if you're wondering where Command-J came from, it's under Object, Path, Join, and there it is, Command-J. Okay, so we'll select white arrow. Remember, the white arrow will select individual anchor points. Individual anchor points, Option, Path, Join, Command-J. So now you've got the front of the box. See how the fill has, has turned on us? Instead of being an open path, it filled this way. Now it's a closed path because we closed it when we joined. Okay, now, this top will fit right back on top of here. Okay, but I want to uh, give this a little bit of some, some of this treatment here. Looks like green, white, green, yellow, something in there. Okay. So instead of just using the uh, instead of just using the uh, solid green that I've got here, I've got that green white gradient that's left over from the last thing I drew up here. Now you don't even have to have that. You can start with any gradient on the D, on the on your list. But it just happens that a minute ago I made a green to white gradient, so I'll fill it with that. And you can see it's a little dark and there's no yellow in it, and so it's not perfect. But it's a good start. And I'll bring down my drop down way over here, and instead of that dark green, I'll probably want to use something that relates a little bit more to this. Maybe one of these, uh, I don't know, maybe this one. Let's see how it looks. I'm just going to drop it on top of the gradient option here. Now it takes a second to update. When you click, it'll update. Now you can see that's a little bit closer to this color. But let's include some uh, yellow green in here and I'll put that in here. This time I'm just going to put it on top of the white. And then when I update you'll see that you'll see it update like that. Now if you want to get if you want to get a little bit more going here uh, you can add some other greens in here. Maybe slide this over. Maybe put this green in here. And I'll just drag it this time. Notice where I'm putting it on my gradient bar. I'm just putting it on the side there. See how I just added that? You don't have to replace one. You can add new ones. Okay, now when I click, it'll update. And you can see it looking, it's looking a little better. Okay, our color scheme here is slightly different than the one uh, above. But the yellow is a little strong. Okay, and you can just keep adjusting this until you're totally happy with it. So I'll grab another green here. Let's see, maybe this one. And see what happens if I replace this. Click. Now it's like too much of the same color. Maybe, maybe I can fix that too. I'll put this darker green in on this end. You can see how it's starting to update now. Sometimes it's really hard to get just exactly the perfect color. But uh, I don't even worry about it until I kind of start to finish things. Now up here, this guy needs to come down, so I'm just going to select it and use my shift key and the down arrow until it's in place. Back up. You can see that it fits together very well now. Okay, <clears throat> now you may want to try this. I've got, this is just a solid color. What if it had the same gradient in it? I've put that gradient in it, but I'll change the direction of my gradient annotator. And man, it'll make it look so much more uh, three-dimensional. 
Let me do that. And you can see how I'm just kind of clicking around here and now it looks much better. All right, and that's the outline view of it. Now, uh, you may notice in our illustration, it's kind of got these edgy things going on. You can put more gradients on top of it and then move them around a little bit if you like to. For instance, if I click here, now I've got just the front and I'll copy and I'll paste in front, command F. Okay, time for class. Okay, and with that uh, pasted in front, I can sort of move it so it's no longer in perfect alignment with the one below, and run my gradient into a different direction. And then I'll inspect, and you can see that when I did that, it made it out of alignment over here. Now you can fix those things pretty easily if you just grab that anchor point and maybe move it down. Now it's hidden. I'm just using my scroll wheel to come over here. Click and pull down. If I use my shift here, it'll it'll keep it uh, in perfect alignment. Now you may discover that you're not in perfect alignment and you can fix that too maybe. Grab here and bring it up back over to here. And if there's still stuff hiding in there you can uh, go to your outline view and get even closer in and, and continue to work on that. Okay. Let's just look at it and see how it looks. Anyway, that's kind of how you can get some of that edgy quality to it if you want it. You can also try just adding a new color to it if you if you have if you want to put a different you know a different gradient in it. I'll grab uh, maybe I'll grab some uh, how about some white? Just add that in, and now I've got a little white over here that I can mess around with. Or you can do it on your annotator too, remember. Anyway, until you get something that looks really good for the bottom of the box. Okay, then, um, and you can just keep uh, messing with that forever. If you don't like that, you can fix that. If you don't like that, okay. I'm just going to grab this whole thing and pull it over here. And you'll probably notice that it's... Uh, maybe too small and that it's in the wrong location. Uh, shift command left bracket should send it behind and then grab right here with option and shift and it'll grow. And now it looks uh, like it's fitting in there behind the cone a little bit better. And any other stuff that you want to do to make it to kind of finish it out is uh, fine. If you have trouble getting the shadows to kind of blend in, here's a, a idea that I've had, that I've done before. If I just click on the top of this one and copy, Command C, paste in front, Command F, and just add maybe some gray, and then make that gray transparent, or maybe even black would be better. Yeah, well, black would probably be better. Go to black, make it a thin transparency, and it looks kind of neutral down. It looks a little better, kind of matches maybe better with the grays that are up there in the top there. You do the same with any of this stuff. Click on the front, copy, command C, paste in front, command F. Give it a dark color, change the transparency on it. And now you kind of neutralize down that that uh, that uh, white that we had in there too, and rearrange this so it 
maybe fits a little better. Maybe even by making it a little bit smaller. Use the option key. And tap it up. That's kind of cool looking. Like a lip under there. Okay, all that stuff uh, working pretty good uh, for us now. Um, as many layers as you want to create, it's, it's all up to you. You can even uh, copy and paste in front and then add some neutralizing fills down here. Actually, I don't see it working, so I'm going to try that again. This one, copy, paste in front, change to black, and make it less than full opaque. Make it 40. Wow, that really makes quite a difference in the way it appears there. Okay, all that stuff you can do it. You can do it on anything if you want any of this stuff to have that kind of treatment. Multi layers is a great way to uh, make that. Just a, a great way to make that better. Now the whole thing is ready to just enlarge. I'll select it all, click and drag. Holding the shift key here so it doesn't shift off my off my uh, proportion, and you can see how that works. There you go. Don't need the grid anymore. Turn that off. Now I could add a background or do some other things to it. Uh, maybe add a, a roadway going this way and a curb behind it and uh, somebody's foot with a cigarette being stubbed out here. I don't know. I've never seen a green traffic cone before, so I'm not really sure how realistic this is. After I finish, if the proportions are off and you realize that doesn't look skinny enough, you can do it without the shift key. And you can skinny it up. And the whole thing will just stay together. Just like that. Okay, I'm going to quit here. That's a good way to approach the uh, traffic cone, I think.